from the UBS Broadcast Center at Union University, this is Jackson 24-7. Hello, I'm Rachel Pratt. This is a special edition of Jackson 24-7. Music is king in West Tennessee. It's part of our heritage. It also attracts tourists from all around the world. At one point, estimates were that every third person in Tennessee played some kind of instrument. The advent of contemporary services and worship music teams have reduced the use of organs in churches. However, an organ played well can lift spirits and bring a smile to your face. Today, Jackson 24-7 has an all-music theme. The man who is with us today is known as the Happy Organist. In 1966, when he was barely 13 years old, Charles Ritchie became an organist of a Baptist church in Memphis. His ability to play and sing landed him on many radio and television shows throughout his teen years. That's a talent he continues today. When he was 15 years old, he surrendered to full-time Christian ministry and later attended Union University. That's where he met his future wife, Jackie Fowler. They were married 43 years ago. All along, he continued his music as well as his ministry. Charles Ritchie also played during a segment of the Southern Baptist Convention in Pittsburgh. He's written and recorded many scripture and praise songs which are available on iTunes. Pastor Ritchie most often sings and plays in the meetings he preaches. For the next half hour, we present the music of Charles Ritchie, the happy organist. If you've never seen or heard the music of Charles Ritchie on Facebook or YouTube, you're in for a real treat today. Pastor Ritchie is with us live in the studio, and he's going to entertain us for the next 15 minutes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You've become a church organist, and at the age of 13, you started to learn to play the organ. What made you want to learn? I really, Priscilla, started learning on the organ when I was eight years old. Uh, the piano didn't interest me. And it uh, didn't interest me until later on in life, but the organ fascinated me because it made all kinds of different sounds. And so I started at eight, and quite naturally, by the time I had about five years under my belt, well, then yeah, it, that kind of opened the door for me to play in church and become a church organist. How would you describe your style of playing? Oh, my goodness. I think it's kind of a hodgepodge of like... Um, 50-something years of, of different styles. I, I learned early on with the old Hammond Organ Society in Memphis as a child, the Pointer System, and I mentioned that on my website, but, um, uh, you know, I've, I play keys with our praise and worship band in our church at ABC Memphis, and then I, I also play, I've, I've backed up country groups and, you know, folk groups and things like that, so it's just a hodgepodge. I like big band stuff, that's what I play at the horse shows. And so you take all of that and put it together, I'm not sure what you'd call it. I just call it Charles Ritchie style. Oh. Um, what are you going to play for us first? I'm going to play one that went viral back in October called it Calvary and um, got over 5 million views. And it's just a simple hymn, but I play it probably like you've never heard it before. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Sure. to Union University in the 70s when it was still downtown. Right. What do you think when you see the campus now? Oh, it's beautiful. It, uh, we never imagined a campus being so lovely and so beautiful. 
Of course, in the 70s, we never imagined the union becoming the institution that it is today. I mean, it was a great institution then, and that's one of the reasons why that uh, my wife chose to attend. But just what God's been able to do through the years has been magnificent and been miraculous in a sense. And it's just uh, awesome, and, and it makes you awestruck just to pull in and just see everything that union has become. Now, what are you going to play for us next? I'm going to play one that I haven't played before. It's uh, from the Gaither uh, series, and it's called Just Over in the Glory Land. But I play it just a little faster than uh, Bill Gaither might like for me to play it. All right. You're going to be back in Jackson this summer to uh, play at a horse show. Could you tell us briefly about that? Yes, it's uh, out at the Pewborn Park, and it's a horse show that I've done for quite a few years. It's what I call a one-nighter, and uh, it's usually, I believe it's the last part of July, but, um, or, or the, the middle of July. I've played that show for years, and um, I enjoy the people that I work with out there, and it goes for a good cause in and around the Jackson, uh, Tennessee area. And, of course, my style at horse shows is to compliment the horses, and that's what I do. I, I play in the background. I'm not there to entertain so much as I am to compliment the horses and make it seem like they're dancing to the music. Sometimes I'll have folks come up to me, and they'll say, Oh, Mr. Richie, aren't those horses talented? And I'll say, In what way? And they'll say, They just dance right along to your music. <laughs> well, that's usually not the case. The case is that, uh, and some of them might, you know, might be able to do that, but what I do is I match their gates, G-A-I-T, I match their gates with the rhythm of the organ. And, uh, and it just complements the show. So what do you have up next for us? I'm going to play a song that oftentimes I play at horse shows that um, uh, is, is one of my favorites. It's uh, one of the favorites of a church pianist where I served down in South Mississippi years ago. And she loved this um, song, He Touched Me. Awesome.
We're just getting started with Charles Ritchie. He'll continue to amaze us with his musical talents and the feet that never stop. We'll have more with the happy organist right after these messages. Steve Beverly's TV classics can cure what ails you. I watched and it got rid of my hemorrhoids. Staying awake at night? Just watch TV classics. My daughter watched and she went right to sleep. Do not watch Steve Beverly's TV classics if bites upset your stomach. Do not watch if high drama leads to emotional distress. And do not turn on TV 6 Saturday or Sunday at 7 if hillbillies give you a gallbladder attack. Ask your doctor if Steve Beverly's classics is right for you. Hi, thanks so much for being here today. I think that was my favorite one so far, if you couldn't tell from me dancing back there. Now, as you've been able to tell, you do your own arrangements in a obviously much livelier tune than they were originally written. How do you decide which songs that you're going to transpose to be much livelier? Well, sometimes that just comes um, at the moment. As a matter of fact, I, well, just this past Sunday, I had the opportunity to play for Dr. Betty Stalnecker Gibson, which some of her arrangements I needed to sight read. And, and I enjoy doing that, but a lot, of, a lot of times I'm more comfortable with improv and, like you said, doing my own arrangements. And sometimes those arrangements do not occur until they just happen. <laughs> there are times I had a lady come up to me not too long ago after I'd played a three-hour-long horse show, and she said, I knew every song, Mr. Rich, every big band song you played for the entire show except one. And I said, really? Which one was that? She said, I don't know. It was a tune right after kind of halftime. And I didn't recognize that when I said, you know why? And she said, no. I said, because I made that one up. <laughs> and sometimes it's spur of the moment when I don't have a chance to glance down and see where I'm at and what to play and nothing comes to me. Well, then I, you know, I just make up something and, and sometimes the style and improv just happens. Now, you mentioned earlier that uh, you do music for a church. Um, some people say that music and ministry very much go hand in hand. How do you see that? Well, I, I'm the same way. I, I grew up in a musical family. I enjoy music. I've got a first cousin that's a recording engineer in, in Nashville. I've also got a cousin that uh, plays drums with uh, the Gaithers and, and, and that group. And, of course, his, his wife is Charlotte Ritchie. And, um, she sings with them a lot, and so music runs deep in the Ritchie family, and consequently, um, I, I, I just don't see it as an either-or. I see it as a both-and. I had older men years ago tell me that I had to either do music or preach, and um, I understand why they were saying that, you know, to pursue one course and do well at it, but the Lord never allowed me to uh, to do either or you know it, it, the music was just too much part of me and so what has happened is God's used the music to give me open doors to be able to to share my faith and and do it sometimes in a more subtle way than an in your face type way and uh, and I thank God for that all right what do you have next for us well I'm going to play uh, uh, somebody uh, his favorite song that's in this room I think he it, it showed it just a little bit of preview of it uh, earlier before I came on it's called when we all get to heaven
Now, when you play, you have more energy than most of us. For people who have never played an organ, how hard is it for you to learn to hit the right foot pedals when you play? Oh, that just comes from doing it. You know, I, I like to tell people when they ask how long I've been playing, I tell them that I've been playing since I was eight. So I've been playing at least 30 years. And, uh, you know, <laughs> why, why'd you laugh? But, uh, uh, no, it, it just comes from repetition. Uh, that's the style I learned. The style that I learned with the old Hammond Organ Society was play the medley, melody with the right hand, chords with the left, the bass with your left foot. And, of course, early on, you have to look down and, and see what you're playing. But as, as, uh, as time goes on, well, then you, you, you know kind of where they are and you, you know what. I've had some that says, well, how can you play with shoes on? Well, I've never really played the organ without shoes on. So I don't know how you would play it without shoes. But I realize we've got a church organist at our church, and she plays with some little house slipper things. And so it's, it's just kind of whatever works for you. And this is a spinet organ, so I only have an octave of pedals. And so I'm really not having to play and feel around with both feet on a two-octave, you know, register of bass pedals. And so it, it, um, the energy uh, is something that is just me. I just, I just get into it. And sometimes when I check my blood, uh, my, my pulse rate, whenever I get through, it's like around 130, 135. <laughs> so it's like I've been on a treadmill there in the gym. So. And what do you have to play next for us? Well, I'm going to play um, one entitled In the Mood. This is a secular number, and it's by Glenn Miller, and it's one that I get a lot of requests for at the horse show. So I hope, hope you'll enjoy it. Wonderful. Steve Beverly's TV classics can cure what ails you. I watched and it got rid of my hemorrhoids. Staying awake at night? Just watch TV classics. My daughter watched and she went right to sleep. Do not watch Steve Beverly's TV classics if bites upset your stomach. Do not watch if high drama leads to emotional distress. And do not turn on TV 6 Saturday or Sunday at 7 if hillbillies give you a gallbladder attack. Ask your doctor if Steve Beverly's classics is right for you. Gig, 1,000 megabit speed, now available to any E-plus broadband internet customer. This gig-enhanced infrastructure has the capacity to increase speeds in the future. E-plus broadband, what many interpreted as JA's entrance into cable television, was actually the foundation of an unparalleled communications infrastructure. Looking out for Jackson's economic and lifestyle future is all a part of JEA today. Charles Ritchie has been an inspiration to people all over the country with his energy and his music. He played a couple of additional songs for us just for this edition of Jackson 24-7. Now let's hear the happy organist one more time.
Want to make your life a little easier? Now you can manage your Jackson Energy Authority account online. View statements, pay your bill, set up reminders, or recurring payments. Spend more time with your family, not your bills. It's easy. Just visit www.jacksenergy.com anytime and sign up. Make your life a little easier with online bill pay from Jackson Energy Authority. Every day we hear of friends, family, and co-workers who are rushed to the hospital after an accident or for surgery. Every year, patients in West Tennessee served by Lifeline Blood Services require 27,000 units of blood and blood products. As a result, over 500 blood donors are needed every week. Visit our website now at lifelinebloodserve.org or call 427-4431. Lifeline Blood Services. Give blood. Save lives. As we found out earlier, Charles Ritchie is an alumnus of Union University. He was a student on the old Union campus more than 45 years ago. He also met his wife at Union. When he's not preaching or playing the organ in churches, he's often taking his talents to horror shows around the country. <laughs> That's our special edition of Jackson 24-7, a chance to enjoy the talents of a man who has spent more than 50 years sharing his talents to spread the gospel and to make people happy. Remember, you can see a number of his songs on YouTube and on his website, charlesritchie.net. Join us again tomorrow, and as we leave you, let's hear one final song from the Happy Organist. Have a great afternoon and evening, and thanks for watching. All right, we've had a great day with Pastor Charles Ritchie and his Happy Organ today. Now, Pastor Richie, thank you so much oh, for being here today. Me. And might I say, you are the happiest organist I've ever encountered. <laughs> Just my personal opinion. Well, tomorrow at noon, ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Pratt will have our weekend edition of Jackson 24-7. Until then, we hope you have a great afternoon and evening, and we're going to let Pastor Charles Richie take us home with one of another of his favorites. Pastor Richie.